Hola a todas y a todos, mi nombre es Javier Valenzuela, soy Secretario Ejecutivo Subrogante de Artes Escénicas del Ministerio de las Culturas, las Artes y el Patrimonio de Chile. Estoy aquí porque quiero darles la bienvenida a un encuentro virtual que hemos preparado especialmente entre Artes Escénicas y la Plataforma de Economía Creativa para conmemorar el Día Internacional de la Danza. Este encuentro lo hemos denominado de coreógrafa a coreógrafo y tendremos a invitados de lujo, entre ellos la gran bailarina, coreógrafa y directora alemana Sacha Valls, en un diálogo directo con el bailarín y coreógrafo nacional José Vidal. Este año, las Naciones Unidas han declarado que el 2021 es el Año Internacional de la Economía Creativa para el Desarrollo Sostenible y por ello pueden encontrar todas las acciones en este ámbito particular de la cultura a través de la Plataforma de Economía Creativa en redes sociales. Además, no quiero dejar pasar la oportunidad de invitarlos a conocer toda la programación descentralizada que hemos preparado especialmente desde el Ministerio en esta conmemoración. La estamos difundiendo a través de Ligio Cultura en su especial de Artes Escénicas. Sin mucho más, espero que disfruten de este conversatorio. Hola, muy, muy buenos días a, a todas, a todos. Eh, tengo el placer de participar de este encuentro organizado por el Ministerio de las Culturas de Chile, que en el Año Internacional de la Economía Creativa para el Desarrollo Sostenible, según la UNESCO, ha decidido organizar diferentes conversaciones virtuales con renombrados artistas. En esta ocasión y, y en el marco del Día Internacional de la Danza, tengo el honor y el gusto de mantener este diálogo con una de las coreógrafas contemporáneas más reconocidas de Europa y el mundo, y la artista, la artista y bailarina Sacha Valls, de Alemania. Bueno, les cuento un poco de Sacha. Sacha es eh, directora y fundadora de la compañía Sacha Valls and Guest, y que este año 2021 conmemora 28 años de vida. Sus más de 80 producciones y proyectos destacan por su creatividad y por siempre sorprender con nuevas composiciones, formaciones estéticas, abordar temas actuales y profundos y por estar siempre en dinámico diálogo con otras esferas artísticas y del pensamiento. Durante estos 28 años de vida, más de 300 artistas y colaboradores han pasado por la compañía, no solo bailarines, sino que también arquitectos, artistas visuales, coreógrafos, directores audiovisuales, diseñadores, músicos y cantantes. En el 2013 la compañía fue nombrada eh, European Cultural Ambassador por la Unión Europea. Y nada, eso, estamos, tenemos ese tremendo honor y además tengo aquí la ayuda de Magdalena que me está ayudando a pasar ahí mis torpedos para, para poder hacer esto con más fluidez. Magdalena es mi asistente aquí en Alemania, me encuentro ahora en Hamburgo eh, desarrollando un proyecto en Camp Nagel, un proyecto que se llama Elementar. Y nada, feliz de estar contigo, Sacha. Muchas gracias por, eh, por, por aceptar la invitación. So thank you very much, Sacha, for honor us to be here today and accept this invitation. So you're welcome. Hola, buenos días. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so I start immediately with a question. So my first question, it will be like, um, Since I know you and I've seen your work and I, I see the dialogue between various artistic, various artistic disciplines is, is part of your tra trademark somehow. So linking dance with all the knowledge and words and such as music, architecture, cinema, and museums, monasteries, churches, and opera halls. So it seems to be a very vital um, way of working for you. So it could be nice to, in relation to that to to know a little bit what is important is for you and what what comes what do you think you you get out of this relationship with different artists what it, what it comes out of that dialogue with them yes well it's an honor to speak with you and to meet you and then also to communicate with um, uh, the Chilean um, people and community so i'm i'm very happy uh, to be able to do this conversation and to meet you also uh, you in person much. over Zoom, but <laughs> um, yes, well, actually, like from the beginning uh, of my uh, career as a, um, as a choreographer in Berlin, I started a project called Dialogue and I actually didn't start it in a theater, but in a 
it was a, a house for visual artists, for residency for visual artists. But um, I applied a project that is uh, really between the arts. Um, so I applied as a choreographer to invite visual artists and musicians and dancers. And I got accepted within that realm. And this, um, let's say, idea, I, I kept um, developing over the years and I changed it to, into very different directions. Mm -hmm. um, the, the idea was actually that it is a laboratory and a research period and you do maybe a short showing, but it doesn't need to be finished. It's really an exchange. So a dialogue in the, in the real sense that you have a conversation about um, different topics that can, you know, they're totally open and that, that get defined also with the other art form or with the other artist. And through the years though, I also did very finished uh, big projects in that, um, under that title, let's say, for example, the opening of Noise Museum from David Chipperfield in Berlin. I worked three months in the building because it was the inauguration of that uh, beautiful museum. Um, and uh, so it was with uh, 14 musicians and um, like about 24 dancers. So it was a very big project and it was really completed. But what also dialogue means that it's it's a dialogue and it will not last it's it's a moment it's um, it's not a production that then can go on tour it's something that is very unique um to this time where you come together and in the last years i've been more and more focusing on um architecture uh so to uh, find very peculiar spaces, either they have an historic um, background um, that it's also very interesting to, to, um, to research, um, or it is, well, for example, another important one where, where that gets very clear was the Jewish Museum in uh, also in Berlin by uh, Daniel Liebeskind, where I was, mm, I was uh, working not only on the architecture and uh, what that gave to me, but also on the uh, historic uh, ground that it opened, which is the memorizing of the Holocaust and what that meant also to me as a German um, woman, as a German uh, citizen, as an artist, and uh, to find my own language with that. And it was very uh, confronting to do that in this building also and there was a very strong idea um, of Liebeskind um, for me a very strong artistic uh, idea to create a void an empty space to memorize to 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 rememorate um, all the people all the individuals but also the communities that have been lost, you know, and everything, all the lives, everything that could have happened yeah. with us. Um, and for me, this idea was very, um, very strong. And for, for a dancer, for a choreographer, empty space is uh, even, I think, something else than maybe for other people, because a theater is basically also an empty space that can be redefined every time new and can be envisioned with our imagination. And um, so in this sense, this void was filled with the memory of the horror the, of the Holocaust. Uh, thank you. I was thinking actually uh, about um, something you said regarding this, uh, this idea of a uh, of uh, it's not a piece that can tour is it's something that happened in the moment and then you say something like uh, what is it written um i'll go a little bit yeah when you say I, I like when you say when you talk about the the permanent uh, transition the the being in the way on the way uh, if you could if you could explain that a little that idea a little bit more that would be nice yeah uh in our art form I think uh, the essence is that it's uh, ephemeral. It is there in the moment, 
we are there because we have a body, because we are material. But our art is mm -hmm. only, um, it's only, uh, we, it's like um, a perfume yeah. in a certain way. You know, it's, it's, okay. it, it's ephemeral. It's not to be grabbed and it's not to be held. Even if we, if we say we are tricking us and say we can record it on video and but we can't actually we all know that and we um i think we we accept the compromise because we have no other way but um i think the perception of of dance is really also in this um in the passing uh, and the experience of time and the recognition of what happens in space uh, in this specific moment. And so for also for my art, I love always improvisations yeah. because of that, because that is the, the part uh, where that gets even more manifest also in the practice. You know, we can do choreography where we pretend we hold something, we write something, we become a writer, we become a choreographer. Um, but uh, in improvisation, we acknowledge this, um, this, the passing of time and to listen to that. And um, I always think this is at the core of creativity also for me, very deep. Also to get connected with your, um, with your intuition, with your uh, inspiration, with the collective mind that gets created in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I think these are all very powerful uh, tools. And we feel that usually as choreographers, you, you know that feeling when we also, when we are working, when we're creating, we are always doing that. But in the performance of an improvisation, we're putting what we're usually hiding in the studios, we're putting that on stage and we're sharing that with the public. And um, so I love that. And this is for me kind of the example of that you uh, make open this transition, you know, this, this um, um, we say Vergänglichkeit. I, I, that it's, a, it's a beautiful um, term that nothing can last, you know? Yeah. And I think dance is the, the art form that, um, that shows us. Embody, embody that yeah yeah and and i think transition and flexibility um i think we are trained as dancers somehow um to it's almost our toolbox yes. and I, I i've observed also in this crisis that dancers have been dealing very very good with the crisis <laughs> interesting yes. uh, they have a um a lot of people are working. They're all making projects. They're all active. Um, they, I think, somehow they're used to, you know, to find solutions. Definitely. Yeah? Yeah. It's not. Uh, we don't. We don't fix. We are. Yeah. Yeah. We we are fluid. It's a it's a fluid art form, yeah. and uh, in life, I also believe that you know we are always uh, transiting. I I feel every day when we wake up, we are not the same person, mm -hmm. and the more we can be able to see that every day is a new chance. Every day we are on a transition to something new. Um, yeah. I, I think this is um, this is an incredible uh, opportunity somehow. Yeah, and regarding that, actually, that um, subject, that I, those ideas. In March you, of this year, you just presented a new experimental work in C, um, which is a, di a dialogue of music, dance, and virtual and physical spaces, where you explore the potential of uh, flexibility and artistic productions of, during this time of pandemic. So, could be nice also if you could talk a little bit to us to of that project and how what the process was. That would be really good. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, this is my um, this is my my baby at the moment, <laughs> actually. Because, um, it's beautiful. I, just, I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> it's great. The colors. Yes. I love colors in the music. It's really, uh, I, we feel that it's like a new beginning of something um, that uh, we can imagine to grow into so many ways. Even though we 
we kind of did an online premiere, a live stream. It was never performed with public until now. Um, but uh, it's basically based on the music by Terry Riley. Terry Riley is, um, one can say he's, uh, let's say the grandfather of minimal music. Um, the piece was written in 1964. And um, the interesting thing, it's, um, it's very simple. It has, um, it's in C, so in C uh, major. And uh, it can be performed by any kind of instruments, any amount of instruments. So there are many, many versions. It can be performed by anybody. And uh, this is very beautiful. It's very inclusive and yeah. open. And it's not elite, you know, yeah. it's very, um, it's already very open-minded. And um, he wrote a score uh, that's basically, uh, it's one page. And oh, it's, it's a pity. I, 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 afterwards I will come up uh, and I show you the score. I, now I don't have it with me, but I want to show you the score. And um, then there is uh, an explanation, a written explanation. What are the rules? So basically I, I said, we can act as musicians. So we just become actually part of the score. And um, we take all the rules that he wrote into consideration for us as dancers. But we have another, um, we have another dimension because we have space. So I had to um, develop, uh, let's say about, about 30, more or less 30 rules or functions that are being applied in the moment. And on top of this, or let's go back to the musical score, there are 53 figures, small figures, very short, and they are being performed in consequence, one till 53. You can never jump back, you never jump forward. Sorry, Sasha, when you say figures, you mean like a, a, the music in the music score, like a, uh, when something new start and end and end, and this is a figure for you. Okay, cool. Yes, it's a very small um, musical for like phrase. Yeah. It's sometimes only four notes. Yeah? yeah. It's a very short, and these fifty-three figures they can be repeated how long you want. Ah. Uh. And the group has the same assignment. The only uh, limitation is you can never be more than four till five figures behind oh. or in front. So they, they have to be really aware. They have to be aware where the others are and can never be. So you can never run away yeah. and you can never be left behind. So the intention, how I would yeah. say it with my words is that you are very responsible. It is a piece for a group where the individual has a lot of freedom, but, but also always, has, yeah, it all, always has to consider group. It's not a piece about an individual in a group, but it's about a group yeah. with individuals. And within there, there lies a big freedom and also a responsibility mm. because you, you are very um you are very interdependent with the other dancers and there is a lot of a lot of things going on so the dancers have also 53 figures mm. like the music mm. and they're doing uh, applying the format in the same way mm. but they have to move in space at the same time and organize the space with all these formations that they have but mm. nothing is decided Everything happens in the moment. Oh, that's and that's amazing. very, very challenging, but so beautiful because um, I for me, it's the merit. Yeah, I understand, understand. what you might have. <laughs> to see it happening in front of your eyes there for exactly. a first time. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's a marriage for me between choreo choreography and improvisation. Yeah. yeah? So, um, and now I'm, I was starting to work on a version for, um, for children and amateurs mm. because I want to have the same form. It mm. almost looks the same, but it's counted much, much easier and it's just a little bit slower. Mm. So 
Um, so because I want that everybody can have access and I'm, I'm imagining it that it can be danced in the streets, on yeah. marketplaces, that um, people can come, that it becomes a language, yeah. you know, that you can share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. I think it's great because I also think that this, this kind of work is also teaching us, as you just, I, I have a quotation of you actually, that it says, how we can measure our liberty during the pandemic without harming society. And this is a, an amazing exercise of that. So how we can be free, but also be responsible at the same time. And I think, I think dance has a lot to do in a, I wish dance it becomes something very more important than what it, what it is right now in education or in society in general. Because I, I think if people could be have the freedom or the opportunity to to exercise, for example, this piece that you are actually now trying to do with children and amateurs, this should be done for everyone. And they, I think, a better world we will we will we will have. I think. So yes, um, another thing I want to ask you is. Um, how, uh, let me see if it is actually what I wanted to ask you. Mm. No, I want to go straight into these children uh, because I know you are interested in, um, in community and, uh, and you have a special commitment to education and social projects so, um, that involves community. Um, and I know you founded in 2007, this children dance company, Kinder Dance Company. And in 2016, the inter interdisciplinary exchange platform to Heron what's opening and serving as a space for arts and politics. So if you could tell us a little bit more about these amazing projects you are carrying with your company. Uh, yeah, well, um, I started the children company because actually I have two children myself and I wanted that they also, not only them because they actually were already dancing, but also other children, friends of them, uh, to participate because I think that dance is a very powerful tool to feel, to be in your body and to perceive the world, to move in space, you know, to orientate. Um, I mean, now we have Google Maps, but I think it is <laughs> something very internal that you can learn, you know, where is your compass, where is your guideline, you know. So um, I started first teaching myself, uh, then I, it was getting too much actually. And um, uh, so I started to uh, pass this uh, information to some of my dancers that have interest to teach with, uh, to teach children and to have, they have a very good pedagogic uh, intuition. And there are uh, some people um, that are, um, it's about, well, there are now six dancers that are uh, that are teaching, and we're having uh, different groups from different ages, from five till let's say 16, 18. Mm -hmm. Then usually, when they get into um, you know this teenager and until eighteen, <laughs> they they have too many other things, um, and usually it's lost. Yeah. Um, but uh, we have also we it is not a technical training uh, per se, there's some technique, but basically it is also really um, developing their creativity and the tools of improvisation and a lot of contact improvisation. So a very free approach um, and a very uh, also uh, creative state. So they're always creating works also, and then they perform it sometimes, their collaborations also with musicians and costumes designers so that they can go through the whole process of, um, of uh, performance also. And then they would usually once a year, they perform also in the theater in Radial System. So they really have this experience also what it means mm. to create something together as a group, because I think this is a very, it's a very strong um, experience for, yeah. for, for children. It's a, you feel very um, proud and, um, and you feel the group also very strong. Mm. So this is, um, I, I'm very happy. I've been not really growing it widely. There's many, there's a lot of interest, but it needs to be also a bit practical. And it's not a school, you know, yeah. it, it's still part of the company and the dancers of the company also give this 
work. So for example, in the next project in autumn, they will start with in C to teach. So let's say the information and the ideas that I'm working with, then I'm passing on also into that group. That's amazing. Um, and then, um, but they, they develop also, uh, sometimes they develop also totally independent ideas. Sometimes really the ideas come very strongly also from the children. For example, um, Gabriel Galines, who is one of the teachers, he worked with the uh, 16, uh, 15, 16 year old uh, kids and they wanted to do a piece on the climate change and what it means for them. And so they wrote texts and uh, they were actually working with an indigenous uh, dancer uh, who taught them uh, some um, indigenous dances that were um, integrated in this piece. And uh, so this was a very deep wish from the children to talk about that yeah. Yeah? and it was very powerful um, it was called a warm uh, hug for the earth and um, yeah. so this is this is the part of the uh, kiko children dance company suhern is a bit of a longer story i hope i can do it short um, in 2015 i mean the uh, refugee uh, the, the, let's say the exodus from Syria, but also from, from Iraq, from different areas, from um, the, uh, many, many refugees arrived in, in Europe and um, also a lot in Germany. And there was uh, a strong crisis. And I felt, what can we do as artists with our strategies and also our frame of mind to participate and help also society. And I met a, a journalist that was um, in danger. She was uh, from Syria and working in Turkey. And I met her in LA because she took a refuge there because um, some of her fellow friends were threatened to death uh, and she didn't know where to go. So then I invited her to Berlin and I thought, oh, I will make maybe um, a discussion, public discussion and um, let her explain her story. And out of this idea and listening to her stories, which was really amazing, she developed a newspaper for women in the Arab world um, to strengthen the emancipation of women. Um, and uh, I thought it was so powerful that uh, I, I went deeper into that and I thought listening can such, be such a strong, um, it's like a medicine, you know, um, that uh, you allow someone to tell their experiences, but also their fears and their traumas, but also their visions. So they can start to formulate what it is, what, it's, what they are dreaming. And I, I went deep into that and I saw there are so many amazing um, projects that were growing in that time. You know, everybody had a great invention. And so I thought, okay, let's create a platform to show that, to share that. Because some people didn't know how to help. But there were already so many strange conference between art and um, community where we created like an utopian space where there's food for everybody, um, tea for everybody, we can talk, we can exchange, we can see performance on the other side, music, yeah, I, dance. I, I, went, I went to one, I participated to one and I found it beautiful with this sharing the food in a radial system, I remember yes. that. Yeah. Yes. So, um, and then I've, um, but also like really inviting a lot of refugees. So it was not showing, let's say, the society that it's anyway cultural interested, um, some little fragments, but really participation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so people that would usually not go to the theater, yeah, to really work together with um, refugee institutions. And there was a big exchange. 
And so uh, I have tried to do that now every year. Last year in 2020, it was not possible. Um, but now this year we are, we, we take always different topics. So we have also the climate crisis. We have um, every, every year we think of something that is very relevant. Yeah. And this year we decided we can't do it live again. It's clear, but we're gonna do it online. And we have invited two um, musicians from Belarus because the democratic movement there is very much struggling and um, uh, they are here on a residency and they're doing a piece with uh, one of my dancers and one Belarusian actor. And so they're gonna present that and then we're gonna do a, a cooking session of Belarusian food, like a, in a Zoom conference. So everybody can cook the food together. So you can also participate. I will send you the link. I will love it. And, uh, and then there's a conversation. Um, so there where they can tell, um, there is a Marina Naproshkinskaya. She's a, a visual artist working in Berlin, also from Belarus. So just to, to point out this crisis area and to give support. So this is like what we want to do. And we change our, you know, the way we deal with it, but, um, I think there's always a way to um, to support yeah. somehow. But you just say before, like dancers and choreographers, we are used to find our way. <laughs> so exactly. congratulations for that. That's an, it's an amazing project. And I really love this cooking idea. I was also carrying a project in Chile about cooking with the community. I think it's such a great place to get together, to share thoughts and feelings and, and create because cooking is, is creation as well, you know? Great. Um, so would you like to, um, um, I just, I think I have one last question maybe, and it's about reflecting into these 28 years of that since the beginning of the company and how you think the experience of our dance or um, how have been changed during these years, like, um, yeah, the scene and, and also, yeah, the, the current situation of the pandemic, how we have, have been making us change a lot. But it could be also nice to hear some of our uh, going through, through these 28 years. I don't know if it's possible. <laughs> well, a lot. I will also, I, will th I think I will also ask you, because we have a completely different, different um, situation in Chile in terms of uh, how you found your, your company, in terms of how you get the money, how you, how you deal with all these situations of uh, um, fundraising and maybe, maybe also could be enlightened for us to know okay. about. Well, the, the situation of the fundraising is very different now than it was uh, 28 years ago. Um, there was not so much uh, going on, actually. You know, it um, it was really the 90s uh, when just when the wall came down and um, East and West were reunited. And um, I was very much based in the East part uh, of uh, Berlin. And it was a very, very, um, it was a very wild and uh, open period. You know, a lot of empty spaces. So you could get studios for very little money which was great, but then they were torn down or they were sold and you had to move. So um, uh, right away from the beginning, I, um, I met my partner, Jochen Sandik, my husband and the father of, our father of my children. And um, so we were um, already in 1996, uh, developing uh, a theater because we, we were already in the third studio and couldn't stay there. Um, and so we found Sufinsele, which is a, was a gorgeous place in the center of, um, of Berlin, a former uh, craftsman's meeting place. So that had a huge ballroom. And this became our theater and it's still existing now as one of the important um, places for, for dance and, and uh, theater for the independent scene. 
But imagine in the 90s, just to see what has happened, it was empty and we were going in and renting it for some money. Um, we were asking the Senate if they want to give us support and they say no. And uh, we were starting it just with the company. The company had no permanent money. They, I always had to apply for every project that I wanted to do. And then we um, basically were touring and getting our uh, income. I didn't have dancers permanent. You know, everybody was only contracted for the specific, specific. project and the touring. And so we went into the theater and dreaming of an ongoing theater, a space where we could perform. And uh, it was in collaboration with two other artists, a theater director and a, um, a dance theater director. And Jochen was kind of the, um, let's head. say, the director, the head of the whole um, organization. And um, it grew because of because we were present there and we had our studio there upstairs. But this is now almost not possible, you know, because um, there are not so many empty spaces. You know, the last squatted houses are now being, you know, uh, taken back. And um, the city has really, really changed incredibly. And so also the situation of the artist, I think there is a much better funding system because now, Lufin Sele gets a lot of funding for the theater, but also for the artists that are working there. I mean, we are usually not performing there anymore, um, but it, the whole funding situation is a complete other story. In the beginning, when I applied for my projects, I was refused many times, and I got my first big application on a women's support. There mm -hmm. was one specific fund for women artists, this gave me the opportunity to make my first piece. And wow. only after I got culture, money from the cultural tenant. Mm -hmm. So now I think the whole subsidy system is much better. And I think it's one of the best now in Europe, I think. Mm -hmm. So consequentially, um, it has been growing and the company is now solid. We have, um, a regular, you know, um, amount that we can, um, that the company is secured. We have seven dancers that are on a regular base, which is not so many, um, actually. My, I tell you my dream always, uh, let's say in the, in the 2000s was always to have a company of about 20 dancers. And I never succeeded also, I could never convince uh, the politicians, because my pieces were more or less always this amount of people, but I always had to collaborate with freelancers. So my system is now to have a strong company oh. organization mm -hmm. and a few dancers. And then I have, it's like an onion. There are many rings of artists that are collaborating um, and in the different pieces. And this though, in the pandemic is very critical because mm. now I cannot give them work permanently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so going back to INC, I just want to say that um, it was very much also for me always thinking, how can I keep all these people um, earning some money? And so I developed uh, tutorials to send them that they could also learn it abroad and I could pay them, even they were not with me in the studio. So. The, I think the pandemic also asked us to create other ways, but the system that you are not secured mm. is very critical. So I think musicians are suffering a lot because they even have less time to rehearse and less production time and they have more gigs. So all the gigs are, uh, you know, they are uh, canceled. So they are really uh, in, in, in big existential problems. And let's say artistically, I think it has been developing immensely. I mean, there's a huge crowd now of international artists in Berlin 
dance, the dance community is very big. There are many venues, um, but also great music scene, huge visual art scene, um, theater. There was always theater. There was always uh, spoken theater. It was always very strong. It's still strong. Um, so I think the whole, um, let's say the artistic uh, environment has developed very strongly, but I'm very curious what will happen now mm. because um, now we are supported. I think Germany has been trying to take care. You know, there are different funds to support uh, also solo artists with, uh, with grants in this pandemic that they can still work. Mm -hmm. But I think there will be a radical change afterwards and we have to be prepared and yeah. we have to really take good care um, that not through the funding system, everything will slowly collapse. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's such a challenge. And I, I, I really congratulate you. I think you have doing great all these years, like very intelligent ways of surviving or having the people busy working. This tutorial thing, I found it amazing. <laughs> that was such a good opportunity for all of them, for sure. Um, so I think I think most, more or less we are, I don't know if you want to say some something else but to talk about your last project. What are you actually doing right now? Maybe that could be nice to hear from you. Yeah, I think I I, I think you had two. One was the history, but there was one other question I think that I uh, didn't answer. Let me because see. Let me see. You had two questions in one. Yeah. Let me. I have I have my. What is your current pandemic crisis? I thought what the pan well, I kind of answered that. Yeah, you can answer yeah, it. I mean, I kept working, yeah. And I actually, I changed some of my choreographies also um, for a distance. Uh -huh. um, I did a sacre with, uh, without touching uh, because <laughs> I thought also that the sacre is very, um, it's a very relevant piece, I think, in this pandemic. Um, Why do you think it's irrelevant? Can I, can I, can I hear that, please? Well, because I think uh, there is a, a big sacrifice also that we all have to do um, like for each other, you know, mm -hmm. to, um, to stay sane as a, as a collective. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, I mean, for me, the Sacre is a very is universal and uh, also they, uh, there's so much for me uh, that it talks actually about the, the, how we consider the earth to be reborn every year, which is called spring. But uh, if you see it in a more metaphorical way, it can also be very much a piece also about um, the climber, you know? And I think we have to sacrifice some of our privileges and, um, uh, you know, comforts. Yeah. Uh, that we were used to in the last 30 years or 40 years, we have to sacrifice because we cannot continue to live like this. And Definitely. maybe the pandemic is already training us also, you know, to cut down, to look what is very essential. What are mm. the important things? You know, I, yeah. I, I think it's very dangerous um, that I think the human um, relation should stand at the center of how we want to live together but um i hope that we can return to that. so there was another question <clears throat> because i did this project with uh, i hope from shiavo Shio exhibition with an installation with a thousand letters that people wrote on I hope, what can they say to I hope? And then she hang she hang it up in the air in this in this huge space of an old church um, with a lot of red threads hanging down. That was in uh, Berlin. Where it, what, it was it, in Berlin in a like, yes in a gallery. Uh, the gallery is in a former church, mm -hmm. and uh, so she finished this installation and then the lockdown came and she couldn't invite any people no public so then she was thinking 
what do I do? Uh, I invite um, artists that she has been working with and we did uh, together um, an opera some years ago. So I went into the installation and I created a piece for this installation. And then we did it like a live stream, again, no public, but also it was a uh, very spontaneous and it was a very beautiful interaction. And usually, you know, she's also a very busy artist. We would never have met. She would have never had time, <laughs> you know? So somehow we are now um, relating to the people that are living in the city in a new way and very spontaneous because I had time and she had time. Usually we plan like two years, three years ahead. Yeah, yeah. But I love this from the pandemic. This is one of the only <laughs> things that I really like. Is <laughs> we have a different yeah. sense of time yeah. and we are again more open. It reminds me more on when I started in the 90s that you can be flexible and yeah, in, inventive in the moment. Uh, so, um, the good word, very more. I thought, yeah, then you ask me what I do now at the moment. So, at the moment, I'm training the dancers that learned in C um, to become tutors, to teach it to other people. Yeah. So, um, and now the first group that learned it. Uh, via the, the tutorials they are coming now together it's 12 dancers and they are being taught and um, uh, uh, to go through the whole process and then the idea is uh, for me it's uh, the image of um, a flower so we created um, a flower and it has seeds and these seeds they again will be put into the earth and then there will be new flowers and like this, we will create a big field of uh, look flowers. What I, look what I have in my bag. <laughs> yeah, yes. I did, I did this, uh, this for you. So it's such an amazing coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, lovely, yes, that's, that's a lovely idea. Love it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there's many things to do. Uh, we, we will prepare also an outdoor performance in a garden. So talking about flowers yeah. in, a, in a beautiful Baroque garden in Ludwigsburg in the south of Germany. Um, it will be in June, so I hope it will happen. Yeah, that would be Yes, nice. and, and, and one more thing With I want to add. It's gonna be nice, hopefully. Yes, uh, I, I wanna add one more thing. In the pandemic, uh, what is very important, I have um, moved my activities to the outdoor environment. So we are also creating now an outdoor stage, a little bit outside the city to do performances in the summer. Um, and um, this, I think it will be uh, quite, a, quite a change, but I think this is also very beautiful mm -hmm. to, um, to be working under the open sky. Yeah. It reconnects the people with nature, and then we are more aware of a. The, we need to change the way we live, as you just said before. Excellent, congratulations! I think uh, you really inspire me in many ways. Um, so thank you very much for for sharing this moment with us. I have an amazing. I think you have been very passionate about it, and you, you we could feel it. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah. So I think we're done. Uh, I will just maybe have to say um, thank you for the to the Ministry of uh, Cultures, like el, gracias al Ministerio de las Artes en Chile por esta um, oportunidad. Gracias a Magdalena que está aquí al lado mío ayudándome a, a seguir el guión, a Artemisa, a Silvana del Ministerio, a Martín y nada como Incredible to have had this opportunity. Thank you for this opportunity again. Thank you to Stefan that he makes the contact and such a good friend of mine. So love to him and, and, and hopefully see you soon. Hopefully see you in, in June. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yes. yes, it was very nice to meet you. Thank yeah. you. Ciao, ciao. ciao.